um, you know, since speaking with you guys, I believe it was last June, so or like end of June, right after NFT NYC is when I hopped on a call um, with your team, and you know, it was it was a breath of fresh air, you know, coming from uh, having just like spent a month and a half in Asia, uh, where the first half was primarily business related meeting. Um, unfortunately we didn't get to link up, um, but we will soon, uh, we were able to meet, you know, magic Eden, um, you know, we bumped into Animoca. We had a really big event where a lot of the board apes, Azuki holders, Moonbirds holders, um, all came together to this event and like seeing the culture, uh, of, uh, the PFP DGENs, um, in Korea was amazing. It was so sick to see everyone. Uh, and I think it's like, it's hard to see, especially when the NFT market right now is so Western dominated. It was cool to see exactly how um, rampant the the fervor was for NFTs. And um, especially like my Azuki gangers over uh, in Korea. And then, you know, coming into having flown to Thailand, unfortunately didn't get to uh, visit SG, which we will soon. Um, we'll definitely be linking up in person, then flew to the Philippines. You know, I really got a sense that um, there's a lot of work to be done um, with regard to educating uh, countries in Asia, pr pr primarily Southeast Asia when it comes to NFTs, um, especially, you know, Web3, like overarching what the technology means. So I just want to take a step back and, you know, just um, sort of like give you guys my appreciation for bringing Web3 making it more visible in Asia. I know that's just like the thousand foot overview, but I want to hear from you guys. Maybe everyone um, across the board, if you want to just give quick introductions uh, to our community and, um, you know, we could just start off there. Yeah, so I, I think I'll start first. Um, sorry if I, I, I call for like, you know, I hear, hear me sneezing or something because I'm, I'm still recovering from a stomach flu. Um, but yeah, so my name is Elroy. Uh, I'm a co-founder at ARC. Um, in, in my, in the old world, um, I've always been in commodities and a property. So, uh, doing, a actually traveled, actually, I lived in many, many parts of the world, like opening markets for, for, for my family business and then subsequently moving to China to actually, um, develop some small cities <laughs> as they call it in, in China, but it's really boring. Um, I was brought into a blockchain by one of my uncles, um, um, in late early 2016, I would say. Um, we were trying to, to solve, I mean, we were trying to create a music copyright project and it was supposed to solve the problems in the licensing industry. Um, it was an oversight though, because uh, it was a little, a little too early to build that. Um, it was an era protocol building. So, you know, the infrastructure was not up. You don't even have your Solanas yet. Um, you don't have, definitely don't have your AVEX or your NIR. Um, but I was always fascinated with, uh, and how we can use web three tools to actually create better digital, digital experiences. Um, subsequently became an investor as well. I think a lot of Singaporeans are very fortunate to have all the top projects in the world actually come to Singapore, Singapore to fundraise. So invested in many protocols, um, going to be frank here. Um, I thought crypto was, I always thought crypto was house of cards until re recently. So, so just a few years ago uh, that, that, that I was fully, fully convicted. Um, so I, I, I quit crypto, let's say 2019 or so, uh, for a year I was just passively investing, just, um, just signing stuff agreements for ICOs, stuff like that, nothing much. Um, but definitely always fascinated by tech, never stopped reading up to today. I'm still a, still a student, still learning, still signing up for courses, still signing for, still signing up for courses, like even like OX kernel and all, um, getting rejected many times, <laughs> but still trying. And, and right now I'm bu building arc. Yeah. Um, over to you, Clifford. <laughs> Hi guys, like uh, yeah, my 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 background is a bit more two point five. I've been uh in huge companies in in Asia where uh cut across like growth hacked across uh, multiple cities like Southeast Asia and China. Uh, I mean, I've done product, I've done like custom service, and I've done like many many kind of strategy 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 roles, and I've built communities uh from web two to web two point five. Um, with like car sharing, car sharing companies and, and huge, huge communities uh, from community strat all the way to the operations. Yeah, I mean, I, my, my journey with crypto uh, has been since 2017, uh, mostly just an investor, but I was fascinated with the technology 
always, and I've been reading up. And I do NFTs, I, I really see the potential uh, in terms of like, the way that it, the potential of NFTs, uh, both in terms of like scalab- scalability, uh, provenance, and, uh, and also the way it's composable. And I, I really saw the potential and how we can use NFTs to be able to k- build communities because all incentives are kind of all aligned from the builder to the company to the community holders. So really excited to share Ark with, with, with everyone and uh, please feel free to ask questions. Yeah, guys, thanks for that introduction. Uh, j- just to quickly introduce myself to you two, uh, I'm Ryan H. I am, uh, I, I don't know, the go-to MetaVH HQ moderator uh, for a lot of these chats. Uh, so I'll be I'll be chiming here with Mitch with some some uh, questions and stuff. Uh, but we appreciate you guys being here. Like we've said probably a hundred times at this point. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to start off with uh, if you could just give us a little overview of what exactly Arc is uh, for maybe those who are listening who have no idea and maybe what your all's ambitions in the the Web three space uh, is. Yeah, <clears throat> I'll, I'll take this one. <clears throat> Sorry. Yep. So um, ARC is a members only community, um, bringing curated groups of people together with a common goal of collective value creation via collaboration. So our belief is that you alone can only do so much, but us together can do so much more. And our shared purpose is um, collective value creation via collaboration. So for us at ARC, um, we want to change the idea of ownership a little. Um, ownership in the current stage of Web3, as most of you know, it's only got governance, right? So it's like an on-chain vote or uh, um, 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 yeah, it's, uh, mainly an on-chain vote right now. Like, like maybe, may, maybe different from some, some DeFi projects. Um, and the conversion rate is very low as well. But at ARC, we want to elevate the ownership by getting our members more involved um, in activities at ARC. So especially those activities that could potentially channel value to the entire art community as a whole. Um, we do understand that the idea of governance is ideal, um, um, but you know, people don't want to manage a company, so they like to be spoon fed and all. So that's why we built an, our community on an app um, and utilize seamless UI UX to get our members to participate, to vote. Um, we also have a wallet web integration that we built a consensus. So consensus, most of you know, they, they are the owner of MetaMask. Um, and we feel that the blockchain utility is already fulfilled there, where, where one vote on ARC is a vote by one real person. So it can give me uh, two minutes, and I want to clear my, my, my nose and all. Sorry, read, um, pardon me. It's all good. Just don't do it on mic. <laughs> That's great. <Just> okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Give me one, two minutes, yeah. All good. That's very, very cool. I guess... <laughs> <laughs> hey, just just curious, right? When you guys were around Asia, uh, what what do you guys feel when when uh, you're kind of surveying the the NFT landscape here, and and how does it compare in 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 the US? That's that's a great question. I, I love when the tables turn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like since we're waiting for Elroy to come to coming on. Yeah, to blow the dose. Elroy, take some time with the nose, brother. We got you. Um, I think when it comes to like our POV, right? Um. We went to Korean Blockchain Week, um, but we didn't actually go to Korean Blockchain Week. That's like a big thing that people in NFTs do, right? We we go to the city the conference is held, but we're more interested in in, in having like you know personal conversations, engagement, seeing what the community's like. Uh, so yeah, the barometer was, uh, you know, to be honest, a lot of um, the Korean market. Uh, it seemed to me that everyone has heard of NFTs. Um, they're being used as a scam for the, the towards the elderly and like other markets because of like their hype and publicity so no one's really like super educated on um how the nft culture is um what are the right uh what are the right ways in which to invest to trade how how you how you find these indicators um a lot of people were still you know the first and only nfts were minted on clayton right clayton blockchain as opposed to ethereum or solana where all the volume where all the actions happening and I think, you know, it was also hot off the, the heels of um, probably one of the biggest rugs uh, in the cryptocurrency space. Uh, don't need to bring up Terra, but, you know, a lot of people in Korea, 
we're over invested, bro. So I think when it comes to, again, like educating uh, the Asian markets when it comes to NFT, specifically in Korea, there's a lot of hesitation. There's a lot of um, distrust just because, you know, um, the trust they placed in Doquan, um, you know, that was that wasn't uh, that didn't have a good ROI for them. And so. Um, a lot of the conversations we had were were around the foundation of NFTs, what this uh, technology might mean um, past you know this phase one of uh, PFP culture, and that's more that kind of conversation is exciting to me because then we're talking about platforms. Then we're really more talking about um, you know the future of what gaming with NFTs might look like, and more of these like engage to earn type models, consumer apps. Um, you know, a, a more uh, like, I guess, a, a more sustainable approach for how NFTs might become mainstream. Those were the conversations. But it, it seems like everyone is still very early when it comes to Asia. And we say that now in the Western market, but especially in Asia, incredibly early, still trying to get a bearings. But maybe it's different over um, in SG. It, would you say it's the same? People have their bearings. Like, what's your take there? So I'll take is that like SG is definitely one of the more advanced uh, like countries and cities in terms of like in terms of NFTs and and, and crypto. Uh, the government is is clearly trying to kind of delineate the technology, uh, and, and how how it's exposed to the to the mass market. But I don't think from a leg- legalization standpoint they are going to kind of ban anything soon. Um, but, but that means that I think investors, builders, uh. Everyone's been looking in the space for the past like year plus, so uh, yeah, we we are we are getting quite a little bit of buzz, and I think for Arc, uh, in terms of like how we build the product, and I guess like I can kind of share a bit more. If if not, I can always take over. Uh, is to is trying to kind of solve this this concept of like trust within the space, uh, and we do also want to kind of create a brand where a lot of like the Asian brands can kind of rally around. Uh, we bring all these kind of kind of communities to 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 and bridge them together. Hence the name, name Mark, right? Yeah. Hi guys, I'm back. Sorry, <laughs> that was embarrassing. Yeah. Hey, no man, we're chilling. Yeah, this is a good yeah. vibe, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I'll carry on the conversation. I'll, I'll lead it on to the introduction of Arc. Um, but yeah, you know, um, yeah. I yeah, I agree with with, with Clifford. But um, Singapore is also primarily a very DeFi focused place. Um, I think the NFT collector scene is super big right right here, um, because you know Asians are. It's like there's there's this gambler mentality in us. Um, so NFTs is something that that the kids grasp very easily, and you know people like to flex here in Singapore. So instead of buying like a Richard Mill or something, they're not all buying a Zookies. Nothing wrong with that. I think I think it's nice. Um, but um, yeah, I don't think builder hype has has gotten in Singapore yet. Um, you you see very very few um um purpose a more purpose purpose driven type of NFT project. Uh, you have a lot of middlewares. You have a lot of uh, coordination tools. Um, a lot of DeFi projects, of course. I didn't come back for Korea. Um, it was a little bit different. Um, it was a very game five focus for me. I, I don't know if you agree with that, Mitch. But everywhere I went in uh, throughout the conference, it was just game fying, like cosplay and stuff. So that was interesting. Um, yeah, I, but yeah, I noticed that. I noticed that tons of game fi. I think you know, game fi fever. It sort of died down in, in the Western market, but over there, it's alive and well. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, the scene is uh, very different in 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 Asia. Um, but Southeast Asia, to my knowledge, especially especially speaking for the funds and all, Southeast Asia is one of the fastest growing segments in the world in terms of NFT ownership. Um, if not the fastest growing segment. But anyways, uh, I'm gonna continue continue with Ark. Yeah, I'm gonna give an introduction of Ark uh, right yeah. now. <laughs> I think I think we right. can share. You can share. Yeah, as in we can share in which like how how you understood the the Asian market, right, and how we came up with the concept of Arc. Yeah, so I guess uh, yeah, I mean, that's a great place to start. I think you know, for one, what what caught me was you guys are actually building a consumer facing app. I think that's like such an interesting, like that always that I, I think that in, like immediately legitimizes um, you know uh, being a, a technology f- like forward company. Yeah, so maybe I will um, start a little on that on how the idea came up with. Um, so yeah, we came up the concept of Arc a few years ago. Um, actually, when we first spotted a gap in the market where there wasn't a single thriving and engaged digital community, one that cuts across Asia, one that actually gets its members to do things together, 
Um, we fast forward to today, right? Um, a community like this still doesn't exist even in the Web2 or Web3 sense, with most communities having more of an offline presence here in Asia than online. And, and this is despite us heading into a new era of digi digitalization and connectivity. I want to disclaimer though, that um, although we have Asia as our moat, we definitely welcome people of all races to, and cultures to join us. Um, so we want to be a community with Asian roots, but with a global lens. Um, and the reason for this is, you know, like what I mentioned just now, Asians are the biggest crypto holders in the world by far. I think, I, I think it's a uh, 50% um, of the global uh, ownership, but, but there is still yet a common shared experience for us. So what I mean by that is that the good events are all held in the Western hemisphere. The good content are all held when I'm sleeping. So yeah, you know, <laughs> definitely do. Uh, thank you. Thank you guys for, for having interest in us, for our Western counterparts here in the room. Um, but we created ARC with a belief that communities are going to be a future. Um, and it helps that Web3 communities are also much more scalable because of the new tech and the processes that allows a community to be coordinated more efficiently towards a common goal. And I guess also in the way that Web3 communities are able to monetize and distribute value in a more equitable manner across members in the community. So with that in mind, <clears throat> our vision for ARC is to be the stickiest community of trailblazers, one that has fun together, one that launches projects together. And through co-creation, we hope that the ARC brand will be everywhere in the world, you know, not only on both digital products, but also everywhere in the real world, whether it's consumer packaged goods, whether it's on physical buildings, uh, whether it's on big, on, uh, big offline activations and experiences. And we want to do this while realizing collective value for our members after, uh, you know, and after all, um, mooning is still mooning or making money is still the inherent motivation in the space. I think it's something that what ARC has learned recently. Um, I see many comparables to the early 2017 days, you know, that in, in 2017, ICO craze, this is, this is term for the tech, you know, everybody was saying, oh, they are in it for the tech. So it, it's, it's, you know, the past few days has made us realize that while a lot of people are screaming for utility, it seems like there are still, you know, how do I say this in a nice way? The inherent motivation is still Moonboy motivation. I, I think there's nothing wrong with that, but, but, but we, we hope that art can actually change this, change, change a lot of this. But yeah, um, 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 this is what art is about, you know, and, 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 you know, it, all of this paints a big vision and, and, and it requires the foundation of a strong and aligned community. But it also requires pro proper prioritization to put resources on, like, because I guess, um, you know, as I further explain um, um, in this call, the vision of Arc is actually very big. But uh, you know, but thank you, thank you guys for actually allowing us to actually share this with with all of you. Absolutely, man. Uh, it's a great explanation. I really appreciate it. Uh, some of the things that you mentioned there. Um, one one thing that I guess uh, you know. Early on, uh, and I mean, by the way, I am a Pixis holder, uh, so I, I've, I've been, I think, a member for the whole time. Uh, I am one of those people uh, who you mentioned all cultures and, and races are, are welcome. I'm a white guy from Ohio, and uh, I am always in on a lot of these projects that have, you know, uh, events and stuff that are, um, you know, happening during my time zone. Uh, and that's one of the things that I've missed out with, with, with you guys is that I've not been in that time zone, right? Um, but, uh, and, and, and at one point I was like, man, I really wish they'd do this. But then I sat there and thought, I was like, wait a second. Uh, I've been given that opportunity in all the projects that I've been a part of. So I'm now feeling what, what maybe most of the, those Asian holders are, are feeling, uh, on a lot of the projects that I've been a part of. So I think it's funny. Um, but early on, I've heard a lot of people tap out arc as the proof for Asia, uh, right? Proof. Uh, what do you guys think of that comparison? And how do you guys deal with that, that pressure to live up to kind of what uh, a proof has become? <laughs> yeah. So I remember when the comparison first came up, um, we were, the team was definitely very flattered and excited because proof has so much hype, you know? Um, but I guess the excitement really became pressure for us um, as the team understands that short term hype is nothing in this space uh, because we are a long term, we have a very long term vision. Um, and now that we have expectations to live up to, um, I guess I guess the team feels a lot of pressure. But um, given the type of long term project that we are building, we want to focus on the long term momentum and um, sustainability of the art brand. 
Um, just to be clear, we feel that art could, could be a combination of proof collective, but with the ethos of a DAO, and especially in the way that our community participates in community activities or projects. Um, for us at ARC, we really believe in, in giving our members a voice and, 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 and let their voices be heard. So not, 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 not really u- utilizing f- full DAO processes and ethos. Um, but, but the main thing is that we really want to give all members a voice. On the question on uh, how we deal with pressure and all, <laughs> I guess um, ARC has a steeper slope to climb than proof, especially given current markets and also the mini, mini FUD that we've been getting. <laughs> but um, I guess what we're doing is very different from most NFT projects. Um, we want to challenge the status quo of grinding for whitelists, then flip, flipping immediately or accumulating and uh, flipping after when perceived value is realized. What we hope to achieve is, is to be a project that gets the right type of community and con- contribution-minded members on. Then we get, then we get them to pass, participate in co-creation that we, that we will f- facilitate the community. Um, and we hope that you know, members will flip those collections of pro- project, projects. And you know, I, I say projects because uh, that there is a possibility that, that ARC may also collaborate with other entities um, um, on, let's say, a, a DeFi project, you know, because uh, there has been a lot of uh, interest here uh, within ARC, um, you know, especially going to Korea Blockchain Week at all, making, speaking to all the DeFi funds, speaking to all the DeFi projects, you know, and, and telling, after telling them what ARC is about, they were just like, hey, you know what, Pot- potentially do something together. So not, nothing is, you know, uh, I, I, think, I, think, I think the possibilities are, are infinite with ARC. Because ARC, I, I think I want to clear this misconception as well. ARC is not an NFT, NFT project. Like 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 others, Arc is a collective. Uh, so it's definitely more more like like FWB. It's, it's definitely more like proof. Um um um, yeah. But um, I guess so we design Arc that in its ideal state, that Arc would be a project that functions in both a bear and a bull, appealing appealing to both a, a person who seeks the value of a private member club, right? The people, the networks, the community, the access to facilities, along along with the opportunity to work on projects that they previously didn't have um but we definitely also want to appeal to the dgens you know the the moon boys uh, for the lack of a better word especially especially since we noted that this is still the main motivation in the space so yeah um, um a lot to think about um this pressure gives us the need and motivation to to want to work harder you know smarter and to outperform the expectations that are set on us <laughs> yeah <laughs> i hope that answers the question <laughs> I think so in more ways than one. Uh, so I, I appreciate that. Um, I guess my, my next question is, so you mentioned, you know, um, you know, uh, DGENs and, and, and something like that. And you mentioned people trying to get the profit out off, off of projects and things like that. Um, but uh, one thing I'll, I'll note is, you know, a lot of projects see an influx in their floor price. And, and you know, I, I realize that we're talking about a different kind of project here, but uh, they talk about their floor price and, uh, you know, people are able to make a lot of money off the project because they got in when the yep. mint price was so low, right? Yep. Um, and, and I know ARC has a current NFT drop coming up. Um, can you kind of explain uh, the f- first mint uh, that you guys are, are holding here uh, and the, the mint price that you guys chose? I know you guys probably have gotten a lot of FUD from it, uh, but can you guys mm-hmm. kind of explain that uh, process a little bit? Yeah, I just I just want to to tap talk. I mean, tap on on what you mentioned a little bit more as well. Yeah. So in in most NFT projects, you grind for the whitelist. You get you get the mint. Um um. When you mint, when the mint, and you review, you either sell it or you accumulate more and you sell later or so on and so forth. But for us at Arc, we really want our members to first contribute to get in and contribution isn't much for us it, it just means filling up a allow list form and you know uh, um, 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 filling up the main two questions um but we want members to actually get into arc mint mint the membership don't flip it um work with our work with work, work with us work with the community co-create with the community through the collections that come out of arc you flip those collections you don't flip the main membership the main membership is for you to enjoy all the benefits of the arc ecosystem as well just now when i mentioned bull and bear you know what, what how i feel that, that that members will retain arc in the bear is that we're going to put in so much value in, in into the nft whether it's like real world perks whether it's all the physical locations whether it's uh, offline activations whether it's the app the community and the, the content inside 
uh, we want to create a we want, to, we want to create a sticky enough membership that during a bear people are going to be wondering should I sell Arc or should I sell something else? But what we hope for for our members to flip are the collections that will spawn out of Arc. Um, but I guess I should talk about that that, that process, right? Um, um, are, are you mentioning the process as, as as in the application process or or or, or what Pixis is about? Mm. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so I guess uh, um, for us, we're different. Uh, we have a dual token. Uh, uh, we use two tokens. One is a Pixis, one is an NFT that we just launched. Um, so I guess uh, sort of Pixis. Uh, Pixis has a few use cases for us uh, in the immediate sense and the stage that we are in. Uh, Pixis acts as our curation token. Um, we know that curation is, is, is against uh, a little against Web3 ethos, even though it's like curation meta right now. Um, but we want to be a project that ensures uh, curation throughout the lifetime of our community. Um, you know, like I, what I mentioned just now, it's again, it's against Web3 ethos, but being in the space for so long, you know, we take note that being open, permissionless, you know, the idea or the narrative of freely accessible to everyone, to us is a, is an ideal narrative of decentralization. Nothing bad about decentralization. I, I think, I think all of us at Arc values it, um, but we want to do it progressively. We want to build a project that works now, uh, and given that we have a shared purpose of collective value creation, along with the, the rampant number of bad actors in the space, we feel that curation is needed for a project like ours that includes many high-level profiles from the Web2 space as well. So both on the Web2 space, Web3 space. So security and protection of our users is uh, paramount to us at Arc. So that's the first use case for, 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 for Pixis. The other use cases are uh, to incentivize for contributions, but 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 given that we are a new brand, we understand that, that there will be hesitation for members to actually connect their wallets to us. So our wallet to app integration is built with consensus, it's also audited, but we know that people are still going to be iffy, going to feel iffy about, about connecting their wallets to a new brand. So we want to build trust first before we really expand the use cases of, uh, of Pixis. But yeah, uh, currently Pixis is just um, 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 acting as a, a, a manner of curation because um, just now when I mentioned that we want to ensure curation for the for the entire lifeline of, of lifetime of Arc, uh, what I mean by that is that you know most most projects actually actually curate right now, but their tokens are freely transferable, it's sellable on Open Sea, so curation that definitely is diluted after a while. Um, certain projects, I wouldn't name their names. Um, as you know, speaking to the founders, they gave me their rationale for doing so. And you know, their rationale is that they want to, 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 to basically their strategy is to lower the number of, uh, uh um, NFTs and their supply being listed on, on, on OpenSea. They have, they have a strategy for that, but I, I don't know whether that's foolproof or not because the inherent motivation is still making money. So a lot of people are still going to flip when the price is right. Um, but yeah, so, um, I, I, that's that's the use case uh, uh, of Pixis. Um, was there was there another question uh, and uh, involved in this? I mean, I, or, or did I answer it? I guess um, you can I, go, ahead. Go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just. I guess you have you, you've answered uh, it. I, I guess I was uh, curious on what your all's thoughts were on on bringing value to that initial price for that mint uh, that's coming up. I believe. Uh, I saw somewhere uh, that it was three ETH. I was curious on, mm -hmm. on what kind of value is coming with that that three ETH, which you know, it, and I hope this isn't blunt. Uh, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. It's, it's pretty. It's a pretty high price yeah. when it compared to other other projects. So I was just I was curious if maybe you could back that up as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's good. Um, yeah. So that that has been the chatter recently. Um, yeah, maybe I'll start with describing how Arc is different from other NFT projects. Then I'll follow on with uh, what we plan in utility to actually match the value of the three if. Um, so yeah, like um, what I mentioned earlier, Arc wants to be wants to challenge the status quo, you know, of what an NFT project should be. We want to be long term, you know, a more purpose driven project. We also don't want to be a project that didn't raise enough money at the start and subsequently try to raise again by dropping a new collection without much interest or hype, um, whether determined by the markets or not, you know. Uh, so that's how Rock exists, um, you know, when you actually run out of money for, for new collections. Um, a lot of people, as I guess the public from the holder side, you know, they, they, they see, they see, they see a project launching a new collection into them as a way of value trickle for them but actually when you know when you actually do a project yourself you realize that you're actually raising money you know so you either launch a new collection to raise money or you actually go for vc funding or outside funding 
So yeah, uh, we don't want you know you know uh, to be that type of a a a a project that actually runs out of runway, you know. And given the the current market conditions, uh, this is a bigger pain point for us. But we do know that one ETH equals one ETH, and how hard is it for some DGENs or natives, you know, to to stomach a three ETH mint? However, we feel that if we you were to succeed in what we set out to do, our members will gain way more value in in in, in than three ETH. But yeah, of course, a DIY or and all. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, on a serious note, <clears throat> when we first created the initial idea of Arc a few years ago, it was based on you know, our belief that, that communities are going to be the future. I think that's the the best bet that, that a lot of the the the, the core the, the core team members of Arc has taken, because um, this is even more prevalent now in Web three. So. With that in mind, we have gone ahead and um, spent a great deal of money to build this community infrastructure on an app. You know, and why on an app versus a web app is because we want to foster for more adoption in the space. And mo mobile is definitely the right choice, uh, especially given the target segment of not just pure Web3 natives who feel that the Discord experience is not a good one. So with this app um, that we have started building, that we've built over two years, uh, that included many user surveys and beta tests, and tells us to onboard, onboard top tier talents from all the top companies in the world, so like Facebook, uh, Meta, you know, um, 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 a lot of big companies, all, all the top tech companies. So that means that running over hits, you know, that we have uh, are really high, and, we, and it's something that we got to bear. And this, 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 this is this. We we have no outside funding. Everything is just self funded. So yeah. Um, also by, you know, joining our, what we realized through feedback from all our beta tests is that, you know, finally in Asia right now, there's this online roller decks of the right type of people they can now connect with. There's this phrase that, 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 that goes, your net worth is your network, you know, and, and we at Arc really believe in that. Um, so I guess that's one value, especially for people in Asia who, who, who really wants to connect with the right type of people, you will not be able to find a single private community that actually gets you to do this. This is how backwards, I guess, um, 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 uh, Southeast Asia especially is in, in terms of uh, tech and communities. But I, I remember during our last beta test that, that was run for a little over a month, um, many collaborations were manifested and there were many projects being invested by some VCs you know, who found interesting uh, founders in, in the last beta test. So we feel that the proof points of making the right connections have really made through our testing. Um, and we feel that that is an immediate utility that Arc brings with the app and all. Um, so yeah, we see Arc as a place for, for people to find talent or co-collaborators co on. So that's one utility as well. So also tied in our app, another utility, right? It's, it's the core content programming. I, I guess this is where people find some similarities to proof as well, because they have their exclusive podcasts. Uh, but for us at ARC, we want to do it more regularly. Uh, we're going to have um, um, alpha discussions naturally. So we, we took it a step further by not only not only partnering with QCB Capital. I guess they're one of the biggest market makers in Asia. I guess one of the most legitimate and, and most prominent uh, homegrown uh, um, 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 funds in Singapore. So they will provide us with a consistent stream of alpha. But uh, we, we have also created an alpha team, which consists of uh, researchers and DJs from various DAOs and funds. Um, their role is to drive daily alpha discussions within ARC, but also hold alpha calls one to two times a week in the rooms on the ARC app. Um, our core content, our, our content programming also includes uh, um, very high level speakers, not only from the Web3 web side, uh, but also Web2 people. Uh, from the real world uh, um, and we will regularly bring them down to come talk to our community we aim to do this about one to two times a month so you can expect to see a lot of people like a lot of personalities that are usually out of reach um, and what we want to do and this is a content that we tested out at arc you know we're just it's not gonna we're not gonna just give purposeful industry related content you know like web3 stuff or like you know like like industry uh, uh, uh work stuff we actually want, 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 want these high level people to tell their stories, experiences. So for example, if I were to bring a, a founder of a Decacon company, a tech company to come speak to our community, he will not be, he will not come into the app to come talk about his tech exploits. He'll probably talk about his struggles, his, his, his failures uh, before he got to the stage as, uh, as, as what, what, where he is right now. So that's that's a, we feel that that's a very strong utility as well. And then, you know, it's through the networks and uh, networks of the founders and the other stakeholders that we're able to do this on a regular with for, for, for our community. So that's that's the second point. I guess the third point is that you know we have our physical playgrounds as well, playgrounds as well that's currently built in Singapore. Um, we were we were okay with spending personal resources 
here first in Singapore because we know that how Singapore is really changing. So I, I don't know if I, most of you will know Singapore is already a financial hub of Asia. It's going to be a crypto hub of sorts or, or, or it already is one. Um, but not many know that it, uh, it is also going to become a global media hub of sorts. Um, but yeah, so um, um, the physical playground, the first one is Singapore. Um, but I also want to note that, that we did not implement these physical playgrounds within the ARC ecosystem just as a place for our members to hang out in. They are, they are part of a wider community strategy, and we at ARC believe that the intent of the, the playgrounds should be the same intent of the app, which was designed to get people to connect, to have the right conversations, come up with ideas, and eventually collaborate with one another. I think these physical spaces are, are, are very important for, for us, for our members to actually build more genuine relationships with one another and, 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 and create a heightened level of trust. Um, it also help us to build a stronger sense of community uh, within smaller pockets of people, which we feel is vital to create a, a larger sense of community as a whole to the overarching ARC brand. So yeah, you know, Arc um, um, has plans to further build out these physical embassies. That you know, that's that's a term that we use internally um, in other key, in other key key cities. But we will wait for the community to actually decide with us, you know, on, on which location or city to build the next playground in. So that's that's another utility that we provide. I guess a, a utility to Dgens, and and I I think I need I need to spend a little more time explaining this. <laughs> is that um, we have the co-creator projects within ARC, and that's where we feel that Value Trickle will come into play for being a founding member at ARC. So I, I think most of you guys already know uh, um, the first co-creator project would be a, 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 a PFP collection that we want to create as a community. Um, this would be a free mint as well. Um, and, 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 and the vision of this, 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 this NFT collection would be the dominant uh, Asian Web3 brand, probably one that goes into lifestyle because that's playing to our strengths in Asia. Um, so I guess that's where most of the comparison to Proof Collective lie as well. But uh, I just want to, 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 to differentiate that, that, that in the same manner as to how Proof Collective launched Moonbirds, the only difference is that ARC will co-create our version of Moonbirds, but I, I'm just using Moonbirds. It, it may not be a pixel art. It could be 2D. It could be 3D. Maybe not 3D. Most likely it will be 2D. <laughs> but we will co-create our version of Moonbirds with the entire community. So bear with me here. You know, if you heard me say this before in, you know, in all the other AMAs or spaces, but when we add in this concept of co-creation into a community, with aligned beliefs and purpose like ARC. What we are essentially doing is consolidating all the merits of the community, its ideas, its talent, its capital, even its social media following, where every project that we co-create as a community will garner the full support of the community. I, 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 I'm sure that most of you really know this compelling trait about NFT projects, you know, that holders are also the marketeers or the true advocates of the project. Um, this concept, so this concept is actually called community-like growth, uh, something that's already been done in tech for the last, I don't know, seven, ten years. Um, um, but I guess crypto just does it better. Um, but this concept of community-like -like growth is what ARC is built uh, upon, you know, and we want to leverage on this to the fullest degree, given our capacity to actually bring in the right type of people in the community. So this co-creator project will be a free mint. Uh, uh, um, um, we will definitely want to time it for the next cycle as well. So similar to how Proof Collective, you know, uh, I mean, you know, uh, Moonbirds did a quarter of a billion in a week in sales. We're not saying that we're going to reach that number, uh, but that's definitely an op a big, big dream, uh, an, an objective uh, uh, that we want to we, we want to do as well. Um, but yeah, so I'm just, I'm just going to summarize. So we have an app, you know, where you have, you can make all your connections. Fin finally in Asia right now, you have, you have the sickest community being online in the same community where you can actually make your connections. Um, through the app as well, you're going to have really good content programming. So this is something that the content team puts, you know, uh, puts a lot of pride in. When our app launches, we definitely want to give a very sick in-app experience. Um, um, we're not going to do things on an ad hoc basis. Things that content is definitely going to be planned uh, way in advance. We are re we will always bring in key speakers to 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 come speak to our community. Um, 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 not only just Web three speakers, but very very high level Web two speakers as well. This has been done in in a lot of our beta tests. So I think the proof points, especially to a lot of our, the, the few hundred of our beta test members, have really experienced this. We will definitely have alpha discussions as well. Uh, we are really par partnered with the top 
uh, fund in Singapore, QCP Capital, to actually be our alpha partner. At the same time, we've also created an alpha team consisting of researchers from like Bangalore style, from you know certain funds, certain NFT projects. We're still in the process of acquiring these people. Uh, I, I, I know in true applications, it seems that a lot of people, a lot of our Pixis holders would definitely be part of this team as well. Um, and then, then next we have our physical playgrounds. The first one's being built in Singapore. We do have plans to build out the next few throughout key cities within Asia first. But uh, if if our, 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 our data shows us that, for example, hey, LA has a lot of ARC members and, and, you know, and the community is saying that, hey, we need one in LA, we can, we will definitely look, for, look, look forward to building one there but we also necessarily do not need to build out a physical uh, space on our own um arc has this natural inclination to actually make partnerships very easily especially with traditional brands you know so so if 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 there are key like like clubs in a in, in la hong kong L london definitely we are we, we we are already thinking of working with them to think about how we can actually bring our let our members to use those premises so that's 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 one, and the next one is is the co-creator projects that come out of art. We we feel that this is where value trickle will come down. You know, in the terms of money, where actually comes down come to, come down to our members. Um, the first one is going to be a PFP collection. Uh, this is this this is this. We didn't just come up with it. Come up with this just because Proof Collective launched Moonbirds. Actually, this was uh, actually an heavy discussion with a lot of the funds here. You know, and and they they said that the, there were a lot of decks sent to them saying that oh they're gonna create the next BAYC they're gonna next create the next proof or create the next Moonbirds or the next Suzuki, uh, but they felt that Ark has a better chance. You know, actually, this was actually advised by 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 the funds here in Singapore as well. So yeah, you know, uh, Ark would co-create PFP 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 collections, you know, CC zero collections as well. I, that 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 may not, um, that 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 could be a possibility. Um, um, even a form of art, blo art blocks. I, I think we've been talking to a lot of people who are very interested in doing this, uh, but still preliminary. Yeah, I, I hope that answers the question. I think I went on a little off tangent. <laughs> I don't think you went off tangent at all. I think you you just had a lot to say, uh, which uh, again, yeah, I, I, I want to know. The question. Does that sound like grief? <laughs> <laughs> Does that sound like dream? I mean, I think, yeah. I think that if you take a more macro, um, you know, consideration for what y'all are building, right? Like you mentioned the app, for instance, this has been two years in the making. This is going to be like a, a place that uh, is sort of revolutionary for Web3 where we can engage um, off Discord. I think um, when you mentioned your partner, QPC Capital, uh, and, you know, the alpha that they'll bring to the table, it's not every day that you have, um, you know, some of more like these traditional crypto houses uh coming into web3 partnering with like nft like communities in this way so there's definitely a lot of value across the board um i think from our end right I'll, there are going to be people that want value right away and also mm. you know are interested in you know retaining the value long term like a lot of like I'm seeing some of the the whales in um in here, bro. Like if you hold five MVHQ tokens, you get access for life, and then also we're gonna constantly like cook and make sure that is like a macro win across the board for everyone, right? So, so we take into consideration too. You're gonna have your short term, um, sort of like value proposition right then and there. What do you? What am I getting right away? Um, and you're also gonna have your like macro considerations where people can win. I think at the end of the day, right, like um launching this is going to be an experiment in and of its own and i think the magic that you guys bring is obviously your connections obviously the the clout and you guys are incredibly well resourced um communicating that and and sort of the upside and potential there and and teasing it in a good way i think you guys um are, are doing it effectively yeah like you know like <laughs> I've been in a space for a long time, but one thing that I just don't get, but a lot of people tell me is that we got to flex. We got to flex who we have. We got to flex everything. Um, so show a little bit more. Um, um, but yeah, you know, I, I think, I think, I think we've learned a lot from, from, from this announcement of three Eve Mint. Uh, what we realized is that our communications need to be better. Um, in certain ways, we have to be a lot more transparent in terms of our plannings. Uh, but, but we're not, but you know, we're, we're not being, 
uh, uh, um, uh, we're not holding back information just for the sake of holding back because uh, we do have plans. We do have uh, you know uh, plans to announce everything, uh, but we realize that certain you know this space is very different. You know, even coming from a token background, the token the token space is so different from the NFT space. Um, but yeah, communicating a value proposition of Arc a little bit more is something that something that we're gonna do. I think we're gonna make an announcement this week as well. Uh, you know, with a, I I don't know what it's called a visual chart. You know, of the value proposition of Arc. So I hope that actually would explain um, Arc's value a lot better to the public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and that, that being said, right, uh, there is like this whole, this whole networking component that you will get the moment you are on the, on the app, right? That you can kind of like connect with people. And that's how important why Pixis is still so important, which is like uh, our free account bound token that uh, once you kind of apply and register using the web form uh, and link your socials, we will know that you're not a bot uh, or, or we can see that, for example, your contributions minded, right? And all these people will be in the app. Uh, yeah, and, and there'll be real people, there won't be bots, there'll be scammers. And so, so that's something that we feel that there's like a lot of immense value to. Uh, and just kind of, kind of remind everyone or two also that like only Pixis holders will be invited to, to mint our sellers and that's our way uh, to ensure that the all full members will be will be people that we have like seen and created uh, and we are verified that they are real people because like both only if you have both Pixis uh, and Stellars then you'll be able to get enjoy the full suite of membership benefits yeah. I just want to add on that a little bit more you know when we design art we really design it to hit on the motivations, the core motivations of humans, you know, so what really are core motivations? They really want to meet people. We, we felt that every human has an innate yearn for connection, no matter or not, no matter the degree of success or where they are at in their lives. Um, that's actually why we created Arc in, in its uh, traditional Web2 form in the first place, or we came up with the idea of it, of this. Um, another motivation is, is, is of course, a uh, hard to reach access. Um, 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 things that are are, are are especially lifestyle perks that, are, that were commonly um, 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 out of reach for for, for us um, then the last one is really that that the need for growth or, or value but also value comes in uh, perceived value comes in different forms I guess to, to this space is really uh, 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 making money uh, mooning um, but so value comes in you know the the, the vibes of the community um, 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 the vibes of the community you know like the events like even doing good. I think we're going to be making a very big announcement also very soon, uh, you know, with, 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 a, with, a, with a social, with a big, big charitable organization, you know, so ARC is not only just, just doing things for, for, you know, we're just not only having fun, we're not just all about growth, but, you know, we're also do, about doing things, about doing good things as a community. And to my, to, to, to my other two co-founders at ARC, um, to them, doing good is a big value to them as well. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. I, I really appreciate that that in-depth perspective. Uh, also, I love it when Mitch chimes in uh, with absolute brilliant uh, ways of putting things. Um, so, um, Mitch, I'll, as always, uh, kudos to you, man. Um, I, I have a ton of questions here, but it turns out you guys have really answered them all just kind of organically, which is pretty awesome. Uh, you've touched on like, you know, the importance of community. You've touched on your roadmaps and things like that, which are questions that I had. Um, so, but I'd like to maybe get out to some of the guest questions that we're getting here, if you guys don't mind. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Sure, please, please. What's that? Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Please, go. Oh, right on. Sorry, I thought I heard a question there. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, someone's asked, you know, that, and I know you guys have filled this question a ton. I've listened to a few of the, the AMAs you guys have done. Um, you know, someone's been waiting longer than a month for an email from ARC. Is, could they assume that they didn't, that that application didn't make the cut? Uh, some, and, and just to kind of add on the end of it, someone wanted to know that they actually already applied. Um, and now that they have kind of this little code that they can put in from the NVHQ, um, uh, you know, community uh, to kind of get expedited, uh, should they go ahead and reapply or, or should they... Uh, just wait for uh, an acceptance or denial and and, and uh, reapply after that. Yeah, I, I would say go and reapply, but I'm, I'm going to give some pointers on, on, on how to make an application. Um, so on our application, we ask two main questions. What can ARC do for you and what can you do for ARC? This is our iteration of give value to receive value. 
So I remember doing our first beta test where we onboarded just super high level people. So it's 150 of the most high level people you can think of in Asia. So you have your unicorn founders, you have top celebrities, you have top funds, even like the, uh, the uh, people from Alameda, people from the top funds in Asia who actually invested in Nansen. They see that Nansen, they see the Exe Infinity um, and some NFT, uh, big NFT DGENs as well. Um, but we realized that, you know, all the, all these high level people just don't want to contribute. I don't blame them. You know, um, there, there are many uh, factors to consider, you know, whether it's uh, reputational repercussions you know, or, 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 or it's just their social behavior that they are, they are just time, time starved and all. Um, but, there, you know, but we saw that, that these high level people won't contribute as much. Yeah, they were contributing a little bit, but it was not in their nature to be, to be, to, to really contribute to a thriving uh, and, and engaged community like what, like what art needs. So we really value contributions at art. You know? So what, what we really look for is that in, in, in those questions is that they understand to a good degree of what art is about. And they also, they also um, 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 put in about uh, some information how they could potentially contribute value to art. Um, um, so I'm going to give this example. So it was about two over months ago, uh, um, when we received an application from a head of product from a top tech company at the same, the, the, on the same day, you know, uh, a, a more junior person in the same company applied as well. Um, the head of product didn't put anything at all in his responses. He put nail, nail, zero, zero. Right. But the, the intern actually, actually put in a very long 400 word essay, what she thought ARC was about. And it was accompanied by a very long essay about how she could potentially contribute value to ARC. Um, so very naturally, the, the team actually flagged this out to me. I was like, hey, what do you guys think? They were like, hey, of course, reject the head of product, but onboard the intern. And it's what they did. So that's how that's how much we value, you know, the you know, you know, the the contribution and community community minded people. Um, but what we really look for in the application as well is that we want to we want you know ask people to link their socials. So we ask people to link the socials that we can vet uh, 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 that that person is real. So what we look at is a timeline. You know, uh, it will also helps if your Twitter feed is 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 is, is more of your original content rather than just re, re you know retweeting and and you know like shitting stuff and stuff you know, shit like that. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I also want to note that the the social media, uh, 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 when linking a social media, we are using the official API, so we don't capture any data at all. So you know, you can you can trust us on that. But yeah, we really look for someone who is real. Uh, it's definitely real because we we cannot onboard. You know, a value proposition for art is networking, uh, and we cannot onboard a fake profile or a bot. Uh, um, but yeah, so, you know, a real person and also, you know, we really want to vet that this person could potentially contribute to ARC in whatever way, right? It could be expertise, you know, it could be, you know, some, I mean, some, some, some wallets that we've seen, you know, have a lot of ETH, so, so, so those people definitely contribute capital of sorts, um, you know, but if you're a big bundle of fun as well, I, I think there are some people that we onboarded just because the applications were so good. They, they are, they are, they, they are pseudonymous, you know, uh, pseudonymous, but we know they're a real person from the Twitter timeline, you know, but in their application is, you know, oh my God, I'm going to join rooms. I'm going to do a lot of events, you know, and I'm going to contribute and so on and so often. So that's why we really look out for it. But yeah, um, please, please uh, reapply, you know, if you're interested in art, please reapply again using, using the referral code. Yeah. And thank you so much for your interest. Awesome. Uh, that's, that's great to know. Uh, I got another question here, and I think I actually know the answer to uh, just listening to AMAs, but I, I'm going to let you guys answer it anyway, just so for everyone out there who doesn't know. Um, uh, they want to know what the supply for the NFT being sold for 3 ETH is, um, and will will they need both Pixis uh, and that uh, for the full suite of tools that you guys are offering? Would that uh, also make uh, secondary buyers um, hold less value so let's say they just buy the nft off secondary but they're not a member uh with, with the pixis token um can, can you kind of explain that a little bit but you want to take this my nose is running <laughs> oh sure sure yeah i mean like i uh, just want to be super clear about this right like the total supply or the max supply of our uh of stellas would be 168 where 188 will be reserved for our community community efforts uh our our marketing efforts uh, and our, our treasury, right? And and I just want to make sure that we are super clear about this. We we designed this whole thing not to sell out. This like this 
in terms of supply, but to ensure that we are getting the, the correct people and, and the right people who are like-minded people to be involved in our project. Uh, we will have like a general members, uh, general members collection somewhere a bit more down the line. Uh, yeah, but but that, those re- those details we're gonna review a bit a bit later. They will be more reasonably priced. So I think that's one of the key caveats that I, w- I want to share a bit more about. And yes, so which means that if we do spend uh, all these like these three years, right, you make sure that these are the people who really has the most value in our entire ecosystem. These are your early believers. They really believe and put trust in us. And they know, right? And they make do their own research like you guys who who understands that we it's not about the money for us. It's really about wanting to to create this this community. Uh and we will do our best to give back value that's like much, much more than in three years. That's just as Elroy kind of mentioned over the past past like forty five minutes to an hour to an hour. Uh but that being said, but that being said, our whole community consists of of people who is who has both Stellas and our uh, and and Pixis, our general members in the future with Pixis, our Pixis holders, uh, plus for example, people who are kind of owns the account uh, NFT Stellas in the future without the Pixis, right? All of these people are in our community, but it's just that they will have different kind of perks. Pixis will have utility in the future too, or rather, Pixis will have utility, uh, and we will kind of describe it a bit more and with more clarity with this visual that we are kind of creating right now. Uh, that we can share with everyone. But that being said, I do encourage everyone to realize that whatever the case, in, if you have both Stellas and Pixis, you will definitely get the most uh, value out of like all, 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 all the collections. Anything you want to add, all right? No, I'm, I'm good unless, uh, unless we didn't, we didn't uh, answer the question. Yeah. I hope I answered the question. I think you feel free to yeah go deeper. Yeah, I, I think you guys answered the question swimmingly. So uh, thank you for that. Um, well, th- that seems to be the end of uh, my questions and the guest questions. I I want to make, make sure we uh, respect your time. I know it's the morning there, and everyone's favorite thing to do when they wake up is to uh, on a uh, office hour AMA uh, to talk about <laughs> NFTs. Uh, yeah, bro. but that's kind of our game. God, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to make sure that you guys have the last word. Kind of just uh, maybe p- pitch us uh, again uh, what Arc is, or maybe even just give us uh, maybe something that we hadn't talked about yet. But I want to make sure that you guys both get the last word here uh, before we wrap this up. Yeah, uh, maybe I'll go first. Yeah, so you know, for us at Arc, uh, we approach uh, building a NFT collective or an NFT enabled collective. Uh, very differently what we really focused on you know like like i mentioned at the start of, of of this call was we really believe in the power of communities we really believe that communities are going to be the future especially so in, in web3 right now communities are definitely the building blocks of the foundation of all projects um so for us at arc you know we really take pride in 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 in, in, in building out a long-term community strategy so that entails a lot of uh overall community frameworks uh, uh, but also adding a layer of incentivization on top. Uh, on top. So yeah, we do not have token incentivization, uh, but we have a lot to play on uh, in terms of you know value trade from being an Arc member and being able to mint all the ensuing collections that come off Arc, or the you know the life the, the the lifestyle perks that we can offer, the physical locations, all the sick events, you know. So Arc, you know, Arc has a very big vision, you know. But I'm always told not to share so much because it can confuse people. Uh, but we definitely want to be a, a big player in the event space as well. You know, you know, at the start of a call, I said that there isn't a common shared experience for for Asians. You know, in a space, you know, the the good events are, are all not done here. Um, the answer is very clear, actually, and the reason is because uh, um, there are not enough good projects in Asia. There's also not enough good art in Asia. Uh, even in the in the traditional art scene, it's, it's nothing like what you see in in in, in the Western Hemisphere. Um, so that's something that we definitely want to change along with a, a lot of partners here in Asia. Um, um, going back to the community strategy, you know, I just want to bring up, you know, that crypto dig butts thing that I spoke, spoke about. Um, so what we found, found was that crypto dig butts really nailed, you know, down in their community strategy of getting their 
raising the intrinsic motivation of being part in the community versus the extrinsic ones. I think the only extrinsic motivation for crypto dig butt holders, um, and disclaimer, I'm a maxi, I'm a CDB maxi, you know, but the only extrinsic motivation for us is that, you know, that narrative of early punk vibes. So we're actually just holding on thinking that it will just moon, but it's really the vibes of the community, you know, uh, um, the, the way that they do rituals, you know, when I, so I meant, you know, when I mentioned old world community frameworks, actually very ritual heavy. So, you know, the way that Meltem does baptism in, 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 in spaces for new members, for new holders, for new, for, for new holders of, of crypto dig buds. That's actually a, a, a replication of overall community strat of, of welcoming new members. But I guess she took it to a whole new level, a, a new Web3 level. You know, the way that they use bots to actually uh, keep reiterating the, the, the lexicon or the, the, you know, the term one dick equals one butt. I remember it was just a few months ago where the entire crypto space didn't even know what one dick equals one butt meant. But, you know, slowly uh, this keep getting reiterated, not only in the Discord, but also in the spaces. Right? Now you see it all over Twitter and now you know everyone does it. So it becomes culture. So for us at ARC, you know, uh, we are not, you know, building a community, building a culture, something very important to us. I think my, uh, you know, from now on to actually to our min and, and, and even po uh, uh, post min, you know, me and, the me and a lot of the community teams focus will be really creating the best community strategy to actually create a super sticky community, you know, adding incentivization on top, you know, so we definitely want to give value trickle down to our members as well. We definitely want to help our members um, um, make money as well. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, Clifford, but I'm sorry. Um, no, too early to, <laughs> to course, put my words. Yeah. Um, but but have, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we definitely have a lot in plans. We know that people want to make, you know, like what Mitch mentioned just now, people want to make money immediately. Um, we want to change that a little bit. We want you to join us be part of community, enjoy the perks of the community, you know, uh, um, but, 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 but while, you know, uh, you know, but also co-create a utility with us and then flip, flip those utility, flip, flip those collections uh, that we create as a community. Um, just want to make a comparison to, 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 to Proof Collective as well, because this is what I've been hearing, you know, but, but um, um, when we add in this concept of co-creation, I mean, what I'm, what we are essentially doing is, wrapping this whole community its members into one single entity you can call it a quintessential founder or quintessential kol that every project that we create will garner the full support of the members i i set an objective for myself i hope that when arc arc uh, uh, uh fully mints out i hope that I, I i want our cumulative social media following to be in a couple hundred million if we add in certain key assets that we own I think I, 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 I can safely say that it's going to be, it's going to cross a half a billion. Um, but without those key assets, I, I, I set an objective for myself that I want to read, I want, I want our cumulative social media following to be hundred to 200 million or even more. Um, but yeah, you know, so really playing on a concept of community like growth, um, and, and, you know, through the co-creator projects, you know, the first co-creator project will be this PFP collection. I'm really creating the team to do so, uh, the minimum viable team. That means I need to find a really sick artist. Uh, which I've done. Uh, 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 I need, I need to find a sick brand builder, you know, a, a sick storyteller. I need to find super sick project managers uh, to actually be be part of this minimum viable team. And this minimum viable team will actually lead our community through uh, uh, experience, you know, and give them ownership. Give give them more ownership other than just making a vote. We want to involve them in the create in, in in the creation process, you know. So it's you know we we always we always use this analogy. If I bring you guys to go eat spaghetti, you guys will just say, "Hey, Elroy, um, that was some thick ass spaghetti. You know, it was so good." But if we were actually if we actually actually if we actually cook spaghetti together we'd be like oh shit that's the best shit we've ever eaten you know so we really want to change the idea of ownership a little bit not ownership in the sense that there's actually royalty or dividend payout what, what we are what we are accustomed to in this traditional web 2 world um, but more ownership and as in being what, what it really means to be part of a community right not just clicking a a, a, a button on, on snapshot on anything um but yeah um, Clifford, do you have anything else to add? No, 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 you covered it perfectly. Uh, I think, I guess one, one to kind of summarize it, right? We, we know that uh, our process is a bit different from Web3, right? From the traditional Web3. Uh, we hope to kind of create a new standard. But everything that we're doing is really meant to ensure that we have the, the secret community. Uh, and everything that we're doing is to make sure that we are sustainable and whatever that we promise 
and something that we can deliver, which is really what we need right now in the space uh, to kind of build trust. And uh, please join us uh, for the long term and vibe it. Like let's 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 fucking go. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let's, let's fucking, fucking go. go. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you guys for uh, coming in and sharing your vision. I think um, you know for the Metaverse HQ uh, family uh, community here, uh, we are constantly, constantly uh, um, looking and searching for the right partners in the space. Uh, I, I personally believe that Asia is a, a slept on market. And I think um, finding more uh, strategic partnerships in Asia that can help us um, better bridge our education gap that we have um, is going to be crucial. I, I think a partnership with ARC makes perfect sense, uh, not to mention the founding team is totally cracked. Um, you know, there's a lot of resources um, and, and activations that we can do across the board um, that really can, again, help bring exposure to a market that is ready for such exposure. And who best to do that than, um, you know, some of the most well-equipped and most prolific uh, investors, NFT uh, collectors and, you know, traders, uh, creators in the space. That's us. So um, hats off to the ARC team for coming in and joining. Really excited to flesh out uh, a more long-term relationship and partnership here um, for everyone tuning in if you guys are interested in um, you know bulking up and see what the art team has to offer uh, you really liked um, what Elroy and Clifford were throwing down here um, and team uh, please feel free to fill out uh, application as um, they mentioned uh, use our code so um, you know we can get you expedited and again much appreciation to the art team I think this is a uh, I say this a lot. This is only the beginning, but uh, you know, I, I always mean it. Um, there's a lot we could do together, and this is the start of uh, a beautiful partnership. Really excited, yes. for this, guys! Thank you for your kind words, Mitch. If you guys, please come down to Singapore as well. Um, Singapore is going through a big revamp. Uh, this whole month is something historical that's happening. It's happening in Singapore that's never happened before. There's like so many conferences, you know. So starting off with the Fob CEO conference, then you have Music Matters, which is one of the big, biggest music industry uh, industry uh, conference. Then of course you have Token Two Four Nine, but you have all you have everybody who's flying into Singapore. So Arc is also holding an event uh, during then. Um, um, so yeah, please come down and and Mitch, you know, I just want I just want to add, you know, like. So in Korea, like, I, I met up with all the big funds, you know, and we are, our conversation is always about which was the fastest growing segment in terms of tokens and NFTs. And it seems like it's Southeast Asia right now. I think it's dominated by Vietnam, Laos and Philippines. Uh, um, but it's very, um, you know, it's like markets that, 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 that have been alienated I, 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 a little bit, I think. I think Japan is, is super crazy as well. I think it's just, it's just sad that they are, they are held back by their tax, tax laws and everything. But so weird because they're so digitally connected. You know, the IPs there are so sick. You know, but it's just that it's just that. Yeah. Just sad. Yeah, I mean, just that's a really great um observation. Uh I think there's a lot to be there's a lot of use cases to flush out that I think Southeast Asia can really get behind. I think Axie Infinity was a, a really interesting use case to 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 see just how much engagement we can see from Southeast Asia. Uh, as for visiting SG, yeah, keep us posted on, on what you guys have cooking. Maybe uh, some MVHQ uh, members are there, and um, you know, may, maybe you guys can link up. I, I think you guys would find a lot of value in uh, speaking with our members, uh, meeting in real life. We like to do that a lot. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, we appreciate it, guys. Uh, you guys, I was going to say have a great night, but that's uh, not true. Have a great yeah. morning. I hope you guys. Thank are, uh, you. You guys have a great night. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great night. Guys. Thank yeah. you for having us. We really appreciate it.